So it's been a very long and hot summer and people have been asking how has our vineyard been since our, I think it was June or July vlog of how things are surviving with crazy heat we had here in 2023. This is now December and things have finally cooled down. We are enjoying our, our cool temperatures. We're starting to get a little bit of chill hours. So things are starting to fall asleep. Hey friends and family, and if you're just joining the channel, welcome, this is Aaron with AMZ Backyard Orchard and Vineyard, and today is gonna to be our December, last of the year, fall, it's still fall, yeah, it's still fall. It's gonna be our vlog, our yeah. vineyard vlog. We have 14 different vines, what is it, 13, 12 or 13 different varieties that are growing here in our backyard in Arizona, Whoa. growing zone 9B. And this is a very hot climate. It's a like very hot 9B. You found your way down. We've got Camille. We've got my daughter Camille. She's going to be walking through the tour with us. So hang in there. We've got about 14, I think it's 14 different varieties. 13, I don't know. We'll count as we go. But they're all heat tolerant. They all survived the summer. And some of them are even starting to uh, start get their fall colors. They're starting to get yellow and golds and all kinds of different pretty colors so we'll show you those and we'll sh we'll let you know what survived the summer and what didn't and we replaced a couple because uh we didn't heat protect them this summer we didn't give them the sunscreen protection that we need here especially in the first year or two with brand new grape vines so summer summer seedless and summer wine grapes and we plan on making wine grapes out of pretty much all of them so Let's see what survived the summer here in the Arizona desert. We've got all kinds of varieties, so hang in there. Here we go. And so we're gonna start in the back of the vineyard. And basically this is kind of like our some of our older vines. We do have vines that are pushing the seven year mark and then one that's about 13 years old. And we're kind of using that as grafting wood and rootstock for some of the older vines that we want to want to root and graft onto but you'll see the kind of the theme in between each vine we've got blackberries brand new little sprouts that are coming out of the ground we got all kinds of blackberries in between all of our vines that are growing back here so we'll start with these these are the red flame grapes red flame grapes survived the summer man they got beat up in fact we got me uh was it mealy bugs mealy worms mealy bugs that decimated our vineyard this summer. Just all of a sudden, we got mealybugs and then the heat. So these things really just kind of struggled, but they did really good. And so right next to our red flame, in fact, we have about three red flames back here. We have Rasmataz. These are gonna be a seedless grape. It's supposed to be a, like an ever-bearing grape. Produces all year. There's Debbie, it's kind of in the way. But back here is a muscadine. It's gonna be a seedless muscadine. It's called Oh My Muscadine. This one's called the Rasmataz. And we're getting those off of Gurney's, Gurney's website. So those are obviously very, very tiny grapevines, but man, we've started out with grapevines that small and they grew 20 feet in the first year. So don't let the size fool you. These are just tiny little rootings. And once summer starts kicking in, in the springtime, those things are gonna take off. I guarantee it as long as they survive the summer and we sun protect them the first year we got to get that shade cloth on them we use about 60 percent of shade cloth right next to those these are the thompson seedless green grapes green grapes all over this bad boy we were eating green grapes all summer long thompson seedless did really really good and this all you see is the fall flush you can see we cane prune we cane prune the heck out of this thing. And it just, it's such an aggressive grower. We prune these things down 90%. This was just the one cane that we left on. Cane? Cane? Yeah. And it produced a ton of shoots coming off that one cane. So you cane prune Thompson seedless for the best results. This one is perlet. The one that Camille's touching. Those are perlet grapes, little green grapes. Supposed to be very heat tolerant, so we're gonna give them a try. It's brand new. Right next to it is the interlaken. This one, this one started out. We got this one, what is it? 2022? Uh spring of 2022. So a couple years ago. And they started out just as small as Lowe's little bad boys. The Rasmataz and the Omis. Oh those this one started out that small, so two years ago. 
and we did not get grapes on it this year but we just let the just grow the heck out of it we just i mean that thing grew probably 20 feet in each direction so they will take off on you plenty of water and plenty of sun protection during the summertime <laughs> summertime protection we got our triple crown berries triple crown blackberries right there it's supposed to be a thornless oh, no those are poison berries these are our boys and berries thornless boysenberries in between grapevines doing really good get plenty of sun during the summertime we got lots of sun so down in here in the shade of the grapevines blackberries are thriving very very well and you can see the zombie grapes we got zombie grapes all over this thing like i said we got attacked by mealybugs this summer so we were not able to harvest any of our red zinvendels didn't get any bottles of red zinvendel out of this vine this vine is about eight it's going to be on its eighth leaf this next spring, 2024. So this red Zinfandel is a nice, full, mature, full production. Cane prune, spur prune. We've been practicing with both. We've been getting great harvests, harvests with both. Red Zinfandel is doing great. Right between it is actually a rootstock. does not produce any grapes, but it is an aggressive grower. We hack this thing down to the root every single year down to the root and this thing just grows like crazy so we're going to be rooting some of this stuff in some soil we're going to be taking some of these canes we're going to be pruning them we're going to root these things into some soil and make root stock out of this it was supposed to have been a thompson seedless but it's never given us any grapes but it is an incredibly aggressive grower so definitely want to use that as root stock here's our other red flame it produced a bunch of grapes this year cane prune that bad boy we've got more boysenberries back here boysenberries did really good in fact they put on a nice fall flush everywhere putting more shoots blackberries are doing really good right next to it is our princess and princess is the first one to start falling asleep you can kind of see the fall colors letting loose i eat all the grapes you ate all the grapes mm -hmm. the little raisins excellent mm -hmm. she loves the grapes man i'm telling you if you have kids Grow some grapes. They are so much fun to grow in your backyard. Very, very easy. This is on eastern facing wall on the west side of our house. East side of our house, I should say. More blackberries. This one is the Summer Royale. Look at the beautiful colors on this thing. Just starting. This is December. Our next vlog in January, you'll see this thing in all kinds of gold and reds and yellow colors. What? I know, cute. it's mulch. Put it back. It's thank so you. Cute. Well, thank you. Yeah, we mulch the heck out. We use, reuse everything on our property. We never throw any of our yard scraps away unless it's infected with something. But the Summer Royale did really good. That's that black seedless grape that you find at the grocery stores. That's what this one is. Summer Royale did really good. Survived one heck of a hot summer. You can see all the fall colors coming off of it. Now, this is a new variety, Blanc de Bois. French wine, they grow these things in Texas, heat tolerant. This is its first year's growth. I believe it's on, what is it, a 1309, 14 something, 14,000 rootstock. So kind of a sm slower grower, but hardy, disease resistant. And it pumps enough nutrients out. And a pepper. You got some peppers, yeah. We're growing peppers. These are volunteer peppers growing in between everything. We just kind of let things grow around here. You got blackberries and grapes and peppers. We got all kinds of stuff growing out here. If you got kids, or if you're a kid at heart, grow yourself some blackberries and some grapevines together. They do very, very well. Syrah grapes, another red wine, first year growth. I believe it's on that 1390 rootstock. These are all the Dave. Wilson Nursery, Dave Wilson Nursery grapevines, nothing but success with those. So if you can find those at your local nurseries or hardware stores or wherever, usually in the springtime here in Arizona, they'll sell them. Occasionally you'll find them in the fall. Grab those Dave Wilson Nursery rootstocks. Chardonnay, I didn't know about this one. It didn't do well earlier this year. But it put on a nice little fall flush. So Chardonnay is a little bit less heat tolerant. We're finding a little bit slower growing. Some of these Dave Wilson Nursery 
Grapevines, a little bit slower on the growing speed, I should say. But they do pretty good so far, so we'll see if we get any wine grapes out of them. Probably get a little bit of grape out of them this next spring, but I'm thinking by year three, some of these uh, struggling vines, as long as they survive the summers, the struggling vines will put on a nice crop. This one, I believe, is another red flame. Got it in a western facing wall, so this gets the heat. During the summer, this wall just cooks. And those red flames just love, love the heat. And this one this looks like it's falling asleep. So that's second year, what is that, second year in the ground? Yeah, second year in the ground. We print this thing down to size because we, we want a nice little fat rootstock. Good chunky, chunky, barky rootstock down there. So we'll hopefully get some grapes off of that next year. And then some more blackberries growing over here. This is afternoon shade. Blackberries are starting to re-sprout back up, getting that fall flush. There's another one, a little more aggressive growing, probably gets a little bit more water. These ones we propagated, this is the, these are rootings from that red Zinvidal. We just love red Zinvidal. I think if you're gonna grow wine grapes in a desert, hot environment, Syrah is probably a really good one, and those red Zinvidal. In fact, this is the first year in the ground after we rooted them, and we got grapes out of it. We just plucked them off and ate them, but second year, second year rooting, first year in the ground, red Zinvidals. Aggressive growers, and just, they just want to produce all day. Got some apple trees in the middle here. Tomatoes are going crazy right now. Plumerias. Plumerias back there are going crazy. This one's starting to fall asleep. I believe this is Thompson. What is this one? Let me look at the tag. Yeah, this is the Thompson Seedless. Thompson Seedless is starting to fall asleep. Put on, put on a nice little fall flush. Thompson Seedless is going to sleep. That's first year in the ground. We got more blackberries back in there. I believe those are the triple crowns. And then last but not least, this is the Cabernet. Cabernet put on some serious growth. I think Cabernet is going to be another good wine grape to grow out here. Because, man, it just, once that heat finally went away, this thing just put on a huge fall flush. So we got a lot of root growth down below. You can see the tomato plant there. But we got a lot of root growth down where we planted it. That's first year in the ground. So did pretty well in the heat. Got more blackberries. I'm telling you, these things do really, really well. If you get the right varieties, if you've been following, get those right, right varieties. Those are the ones that are working for us. Gotta sun protect them. Shade cloth, we use about 60% shade cloth. We did not do that this summer with a couple of our vines. In fact, you saw these little vines. These ones, are all three of them are brand new. We did not sun protect them. You've got to sun protect your baby plants here in the desert for the first summer. It's imperative. We did that with all the other vines back here. And clearly they did well. Once they're finally established and they got a nice root structure, they can pump all that moisture out into the leaves and keep the plant alive. All right, you guys, that is it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions on watering, fertilizing, pruning, we do have a playlist. I'll leave that down in the description below. That way you'll be able to follow how we take care of all these plants. Like I said, I gave you some tips on what we do to take care of the first year in the ground. You gotta protect them the first year in the ground. They will probably not survive our summers, especially if we have another hot summer like we did. 2023 is gonna go down in flames in the record book. 120 degrees was normal, 118, 117, 119. Temperatures were all over the place for two, almost two months straight, 110 degrees and above every single day for two months straight. Can you imagine being outside? I hope you're not. If you are, let me know. <laughs> My heart goes out to you. The South got beat up, Texas got beat up with the heat. Let me know what survived your garden, your vineyard. If you're growing wine grapes, if you're growing seedless grapes, let me know what you've got. See what survived. Let's share our stories together. Please leave down, 
please leave their comments down in the comment section below. We do love hearing from all of our viewers. And if you're just passing by, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're feeling frisky, hit that bell icon. That way you'll be notified of all of our videos that we'll be putting out. If you have any questions on particular vines that you saw that you want to know more about, put them down in the comment section below. We do love hearing from all of our viewers. So from my family to yours, thanks for watching.